So I know the title's pretty bold, but bear with me. I'll say up front, not the biggest fan of Sean Payton. Um, if you want to say this video is biased, I think that's fair. Um, but I just want to talk about why I don't like the trade for the Broncos. And I think if anything, this sets them back more than it pulls them into contention. They were already hoping they were going to be with Hackett and Wilson. So I'm, we're just going to do a little blind resume comparison, okay? Obviously, one of them's Sean Payton because I'm talking about him. But regardless, just bear with me. So Coach A has an overall record of 152-89. and 89, Nine playoff wins and eight losses. And only won his conference once, as well as the Super Bowl once. Coach A also had a Hall of Fame quarterback his entire tenure. Coach B has a record of 155 and 97, 11 playoff wins to only 10 losses. He won his conference only once, as well as a Super Bowl only once. And he also had Hall of Fame QB play his entire tenure. So in total, only three regular season wins separate these head coaches and two in the playoffs. So, I mean, I think it's fair to say then both stats favor coach B. He has more wins as well as more wins in the playoffs. So overall one Super Bowl each. I think it's fair to say coach B is the better coach. Now to reveal who they are, coach A is Sean Payton. And Coach B is the terrible Mike McCarthy. Sean Payton, to me, is another example of a head coach who's too good to be fired, but not good enough to win it all on a consistent basis. So just kind of like, uh, I mean, again, a one-time Super Bowl head coach. That's what I think he is the definition of. And, I mean, there's a ton of these in the NFL, and not all of them have had the luxury of consistent first ballot Hall of Fame play, like McCarthy and Payton did in Breeze and Rodgers. Uh, McCarthy, Peyton, Tomlin, all of these guys had Hall of Fame QBs almost their entire careers, won a Super Bowl in their first five years, and then did nothing for the rest of their tenures. And I think there's an argument to be made that kind of makes it look like it really wasn't your team completely when you came in and win, but some of the old regiment. And I know I threw Mike Tomlin in there and people get pissed about that because for whatever reason, because he's never been under 500, people think he's, you know, the best coach of all time. When in reality, I think he's very comparable to these other guys. He won a Super Bowl in his second year, went to the AFC Championship in year four, and has only made one AFC Championship since 2016. And that's very similar to McCarthy and Peyton. Success early earned extensions, and say just good enough to keep their jobs and give off the illusion of contending. Some teams are okay with this, uh, but in, some, in my eyes, and I think how the more common trend is now, this complacency kills your team. But I think in the modern NFL, we're seeing this more constantly changing staff and roster, and this is just the new way to build a dynasty. I'm going to use McVay as my example now. Early in his career, He's already changed franchise quarterbacks once within his first five years of coaching. Uh, he's had the he's retooled almost every position. I mean, every free agency, it seems like he's making splashes, be it Bobby Wagner, Jalen Ramsey, Odell Beckham. I mean, the list goes on and on. He he's OK with moving pieces as well as making splashes to get new pieces at the loss of losing draft capital or other things like players. Uh, he's, he just does not let that scare him away. He understands that he has to make these moves, so he makes them. And, I mean, I'd say it's fair to say this is working. I mean, he's been to two Super Bowls, won one in his first five years. That's more Super Bowls or as many as all of the other three coaches I referenced. And so I just think, I mean, you've only been in the head coach for six years in the NFL. And every year it seems like you're losing a coordinator. Zach Taylor to the Bengals, Matt LaFleur to the Green Bay Packers, Brandon Staley to the Chargers, and Kevin O'Connell most recently to the Vikings. Every year he's losing coordinators, but it's on the head coach to keep the team afloat, and that's what he does. As change happens, he embraces it and uses it to propel his team. And the reason I use him as an example is I think he's a new age example of the more extreme version of this, but I mean... If you want to look at a real dynasty, look at the Patriots. Belichick has famously let all pro talent and Hall of Famers walk 
to embrace change instead of clinging on to pipe dreams and old dynasties. I mean, just to list a few players, Ty Law, unbelievable lockdown corner for a long NFL career. Same thing with Stefan Gilmore, Akib Talib, Vince Wilfork, Randy Moss, Adam Vinatieri, Richard Seymour. The last three being f- unbelievably talented Hall of Famers. And he let them walk because he understands you have to embrace change. You don't win Super Bowls by overpaying everyone and being nostalgic. Loyalty in the NFL is dead on both sides of the spectrum. Players chase money and teams chase success. So these te- it always works out. The guys get paid. But if you really want to be a long-lasting NFL dynasty, you will overpay at a few choice positions of players you think are truly dynamic and impact your team in a meaningful way and not impair the team for the sake of pride and keeping a player. Uh, I mean, I, I do think that sucks. Um, you know, it makes me sad as a fan having to watch so many great players get let go of. I mean, just this last off season, the Colts have let go of Bobby Okariki, who was a player I really liked. And before that T Y walk. So I just understand though, that's part of the game and, and they do too. Not everyone is good enough to stay on one team their entire career. Or even if they are, sometimes the team just needs to move on. The Colts did it with Peyton Manning famously. And so to just kind of wrap around on my point, uh, I do think this trade was a mistake, but not for the Saints, for the Broncos. To give up a first in 23 and a second in 24 for a coach who wasn't coaching and only has one Super Bowl in his name, and he, and on top of that, you get a third rounder, and you think that's what it's going to take to elevate your team. I just don't think it is. I think the Saints fleeced the Denver Broncos, and I really think this was as one-sided of a trade as they come. But feel free to comment on this video and let me know what you think. Be sure to also like and subscribe. And also, if you're interested, I'm going to link uh, me and my friend Wilson. I've been doing a podcast on that is currently only on Spotify, soon to follow on all other platforms. Um, but I'll leave that in the description as well. But uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.